start recording like that all right um so why don't we go ahead and get started um we have the agenda from from last week uh we on the community reports we've been working just so people know we've been working through just the processes sean do you want to give an update on the auger side of things there um, so I've got the uh, auger process automated and I sent the nod the wrong graph. And um, I think it's important to note that both the particular repo that we got a request for, for the first request did not have a lot of activity in it. And so we were able to provide with auger insights using one of the two visualizations because the other one just didn't have enough data behind it. And I believe Grimoire Lab had the same issue because of the very limited activity. It's a COVID database from Wuhan and or a GitHub repository, excuse me. And it's basically been, it was very active in December and January and has had limited activity since then. All right. Cool, Gary, do you have anything to add? I think you were nodding your head on the limited data. Yeah, one of the graphs didn't show anything. Yeah, okay. same here. So and I, I had talked. Oh, go ahead, Banad. Sorry. Yeah, I have a question. So, how we handle like two of the graph will not be there. So, we will be having out of four, we'll be having just two graphs. We'll just put the empty thing over there. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you could maybe say not enough data to generate graph, but okay. I don't think we go out of band and start creating new things. Yeah. Okay. Which is where I started, but I think that, I think that is why is that we just, this is our standard report. You have a low activity repository. So two of the two of the visas aren't yep. apl applicable. So yep. Sean, uh, uh, what I recalled in the last email, you mentioned that you are going to regenerate the new one. So I yep. assume now the other one will not be ready, and I'll make the report ready for it. Now. I have I have the the one I, I do have to send you one. Okay. Um, okay. That, yeah, I'm going to send you the correct. I sent you the wrong report okay. viz. So I'm going to send you the right one. I intended to do that yesterday, but things got got to be happening. All righty. Uh, thank you for that. Um, I had a couple action items asking how the LF handles data on their side through Salesforce that's been sent. And then also that draft um, privacy policy that Garrick had put together. Put in the minutes here again, um, just for folks. That's it, right? also has been shared. So no update other than it's been sent out. Um, so in terms of the, we talked about this a little bit last time too, um, in terms of uh, outreach. So Elizabeth is setting up um, kind of a way that we, for those that are interested in the community report can talk about how to um, encourage folks to request the report, um, get the reports in, in the hands of other people. We don't need to talk about, we talked about this last week and I think Sophia and John had some really good ideas. Other people too, about the community reports. One of the things that I had thought about um, was, do you see that where I say if we simply generated 10 or so reports? Do you see that? I highlighted it at the top of the second page. So a lot of this, a lot of the community report stuff started out with a conversation with Cara from Jenkins X. Does anybody remember that a long I time ago? And so we, um, right, that, that obviously opened up a can of worms, not, not a bad can of worms, but uh, just a kind of a process thing. We had to think about like what we would provide, how, how we'd go about doing this, what the process would look like. So what seemed like a fairly straightforward request turned a little bit more complicated <laughs> than, um, than I, than I think we thought maybe. Um, so what would, what do people think about actually just generating reports, community reports, and you can totally tell me I'm crazy, but um, community reports for, um, for, for communities, even just if it's based on one repository and reaching out to folks and saying, hey, just FYI, these are this is a report that we've generated. And these could be people that we know, so it's not like com completely out of the blue. <laughs> yeah. You know? um, and, and, and Cara was the, obviously the first person that came to mind. That's why I have Jenkins X in there, that I'd you know, be happy to 
kind of start that process just for the Jenkins X repo, the main Jenkins X repo and reach out to Kara and say, thanks for your patience. It's only been 11 months or 10 months since this conversation started. Um, but here's a, here's a community report that may be useful to you. Let us know if you'd like to talk more. What do people think of that? Or is that too so I'd weird? be slightly invasive. I mean, we are talking about public data, but I would say I would hesitate to only do it with people that you know personally. So it isn't viewed as a like, hey, we're watching you. You would, you would suggest only do it with folks that we know personally. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's not, it's less like awkward. Yeah. You're like, I just decided to collect data about you, even though I know nothing about you personally. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Mm -hmm. Yep. I propose maybe we contact them uh, from ourselves and like ask them, uh, will you be willing to look at it? And if they say yes, then we generate it and send it to them instead of just generating and sending it to them. Because we, we already know these folks, so maybe we can like uh, friendly ask them whether they'll be interested in that. I'm muted. I said, cool, thank you. And uh, one more uh, thought on that. Uh, are we going to make it public or in that email, we'll ask them whether to keep it private or public? Yeah, we'll I, we, we can ask. Okay. Yeah. Give people an opportunity to give feedback privately if that's their preference. Okay. I mean, part of it is to try to, the hope is, is that folks would not mind sharing it publicly and we can start right. building a small repository of right. community reports. It's kind of building that initial momentum. Um, and now that we have the process down based on last week, it, and just the comments that came up last week too. Yeah. Uh, I think this would be a good approach. Okay. Um, big, big comment here. Um, so, uh, well, we used to be teacher in Master on Free Software like back in 2012, 13. Um, some of the students we had, we asked them to, to share their experiences with the community. And one of the things uh, was as well to, to prepare some small reports. So they, they were doing some kind of community analysis. The feedback in general was uh, really good. I don't remember any any case where people said, "Oh, what are you doing here?" Right. Uh, although we are these days with GDPR and so on, so it's it's a bit more complicated, and we are we are uh, part of a community and so on. But in general, the feedback was good. So I agree with Sophia with the the concept. Hey, we are here looking at you. But um, if we go with the right uh, you know approach, I think it should be okay that experience as well. Right on. Cool. It's good to hear. All right. Um, thank you. Is Kevin on? Kevin. Yes. We're on the web hosting change issue. Do you have any updates on that? Uh, just that the, uh, the discussion for that is going to begin in the next web content meeting, which will be the uh, first Monday of December. Okay. Uh, so we're still in the initial phases of that, and we haven't uh, uh, to start with. We're going to uh, we're going to kind of create an exploratory document that kind of outlines the pros and cons of making the switch, uh, and also outlines some of the steps that we're going to have to take to make the switch. Uh, so still in the exploratory phase, and the uh, the discussion for that will begin. Uh, December, uh, which day is that? Uh, December 7th. 7th, yeah. This is the okay. next web content meeting, which uh, okay. everyone, of course, is invited to. So. Okay. Hey, All right, hey, Kevin, so... or, or Kevin or Matt, sorry, because I, I missed the last at least one meeting. Like, is there a way, is there a reason why we're moving off the, uh, the current? Current web hosting? Are we being told to move, or like, uh, we're, are we we're just looking, exploring? We're looking for <clears throat> more uh, administrative control. Oh, okay. So one of the so it's still going to be a WordPress site, and we're basically right. just going to migrate it to uh, a new hosting site. Okay. Okay. Uh, got it. Thanks. Specifically, the issue that uh, <clears throat> that kind of the kind of the last straw for this was uh, an issue around uh, 
uh, URL redirects. Like uh, in our in our current uh, in the current website, I, I don't really have the ability to create URL redirects. So mm -hmm. when links change, they just go dead. Uh, okay, that's, that's not cool. Yeah, it makes it hard to. Yeah, yeah, for makes lots of things hard. Metrics right. changing names. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, Kevin. More to come on that. Um. All right, so translations. I'm down, moving my worry through the document here. Um, so we have translated the chaos metrics to Chinese and Spanish. So we've had that work done um, in an effort to provide the information more broadly. Um, and then I wrote, what did we decide on this? So I, I, we currently have the translations done. They're, they're already behind not surprisingly because one of the metrics ch changed you know the review metric it changed to change requests and anyway yep. we, can, we can get that fixed but um what did what did we decide on this in terms of making these translations available i just forget i um go ahead Kevin. oh my understanding is that uh we're going to take the initial step of doing our metrics release in those two languages that have been translated and i believe it's spanish and is it a one of the one of the chinese dialects yep chinese uh, which one mandarin mandarin okay. so chinese and mandarin uh and we were so we're going to release that in pdf form uh which is similar to the way we have done our uh full releases uh in the past uh, okay. so that, that's the first step and then moving forward obviously we could do more with translations, but uh, I think the first step was just that PDF release of the, the metrics. Okay. And also my, my understanding was we were going to uh, time that release at the same time as the, uh, the regular release, which uh, currently is scheduled for February, but I saw there might be a, a bit back change, a so. Yep, okay. Uh, does anybody have any comments or questions on that? If we are releasing it as a PDF, then there's no need to update the current translation because it's up to date with the last release. And so the PDF would reflect that release status, not the changes that we have made since that are currently under review. So if, it's, saying if it's timed with the regular release though, then we wouldn't release this until the next release, right? So in March time. Yeah, I'm talking about the current translations that we have already done. Yeah, I mean, what is there something that would prevent us from just making the PDF right now and adding it to the web page? No, no. So let's do that. <laughs> yeah, in the short run, I think that makes sense. So Kevin, what do you, what would you need from me? I don't know that I need anything from you. Uh, Georg okay. and I have uh, collaborated on the releases in the past. I think there's probably some discussion that he and I would have to have to make this happen. Uh, and then once again, obviously anyone else who is interested in taking part in that is, is certainly welcome to join. Okay. I think Here it's a matter of just update, uploading it to our website repo and including a link on the website. So part of the part of the problem, uh, there there are some there are some issues with the way we do this. So normally when we do the metrics release, we all of these metrics pages have a page created on the website, and then the PDF is generated from the website. Uh, However, the, what's been proposed is that we just do the PDF and the translation does not have any presence on the website. Uh, so we would have to, we have to basically generate that PDF without the web presence. So it's kind of a, a, new, a new process. I mean, it's- So a, where's the translation right now? They're in markdown files. Mm, I see. So it's about the formatting and how to make it look nice in the PDF. Yes. Yeah. Understood.
John, did you have a comment? Uh, I was only thinking that at some point in the future, once we're good at this, we might consider the little a plugin since we have more control of the website that would let people choose their preferred language for those for which we have translations. I um, agree with that completely. But it's a it's an ambition more than something that seems like a logical first step. So one of the things that we will have to think about after we get this PDF released is how we go about making updates to any metrics that have been previously translated. You know what I mean? So do we go back to the organization that did the translation in the first place? Do we ask for community support? Like how do we translate new metrics that come that are coming out? It, not to be solved now, but the, I think there's a process component that we're gonna have to think about as things change and things uh, grow. All right, cool. Any questions on translation? Thank you, everybody. All right, um, new items. So the metrics release date, I'm gonna go back to you, Kevin, on this one. Well, actually, so the, the request to remove the date actually came from Sean. Uh, right. and I, I, I agree with him completely. I think it, it makes perfect sense to push the date. To, uh, oh, yeah. it's it, We built the dates around FOSDEM and OSS Summit North America. OSS Summit North America is completely moved. And so we don't have to spend July uh, in, you know, working on a metrics release when that July and August tends to be the time that Europe is off a lot. And we don't really need to spend December um, gunning for a release for prior to FOSDEM since I would predict FOSDEM does not occur in person this year. Now they've already said FOSDEM is gonna be virtual. Yeah. Um, and, and to be honest, I, I know we liked to time it to the conferences so that we could talk about the release of the conferences, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure that that ever really got us much other than people were stressed out about organizing the conference and putting presentations together and also stressed out about putting the metrics release out at the same time. So yes. I think even when, even when we get back to in-person conferences, I kind of like this change. I think the timing is better for most people. Also allows us to, at these conferences, we can actually kind of workshop metrics for release. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I agree. I don't, I don't know that the metrics releases were ever really mentioned in detail at any of the conferences. Okay. Uh, sounds pretty positive across the board. So I think the dates, if I'm looking March 1st and October 1st, are those six months apart <laughs> without doing my uh, approximately, yes, actually, exactly six months seven, apart. Right, right. They are 10 minus four, six. <laughs> like, it's like the middle of the alphabet to me, right? I've never, yeah, <laughs> or that K area. I don't, yeah. it's not very good in that area. All right. Okay. Um, great. Oh, and keep in mind, there were, there were a, a couple other things that we, we had been kind of talking about uh, coinciding with that uh, first of the year release. And one of them is the thing we just talked about, the, the translations. Uh, and then the other thing we were talking about was archiving our, uh, archiving our, our weekly meeting notes. Yes. Right. Uh, like so not the, keeping a 500 page Google doc three years from now. So those things would probably get pushed around to that March 1st time as well. Or that I mean, there's no sense. reason they don't really have to be, but it would, it kind of makes sense to have that as kind of the, yeah, a spot. Yeah. Those are like kind of large administrative things mm -hmm. that would occur twice a year. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, Don. Uh, next item is attribution. This, this is a good one. Uh, so if you take a look at, at those links there, I'll put it in the chat. This is one thing that had been on the list for a while. So the LFX 
is the it's a new page i think at the linux foundation that houses a variety of things one is insights one's mentorship i think community bridge is now part of lfx it's very um, trendy so um so thanks to to the folks at insights and thanks to the mike dolan who helped kind of get this done so I think it's ni it's nice attribution. So you see one is just a page of all things that they're working with. And then another is a specific call out to Grimoire Lab and the Chaos Project on the Insights page. So I was pretty happy with that. Daniel Georg has, has Grimoire Lab reps here. Daniel, I don't know if you'd seen it. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I saw it. It's, okay. It's good. They, they, they need to improve some of the namings because there were some inconsistencies. Yeah, I have. So Anna had sent me, there was a logo that Anna wanted updated. And then Georg had pointed out um, just a misnaming in there. Um, I'll, I'll collect those things and send them back. I was kind of hoping that there was a just a GitHub page that they managed that would yeah. be a little easier to. We should, we should probably enroll the chaos project in the LFX insights page. I was thinking about that as well. <laughs> okay, so it's great news that they have finally done this. Next step, I hope, is to see LF analytics and insights as open source. So let's see. One step at a time. <laughs> yeah, I saw the, saw the tweet too. Actually, thanks to Don for surfacing that. Like, saw that post on Twitter. I just retweeted someone else. <laughs> All it takes. Yeah, it works. But... All right. So that was just more of an update. Um, I, I and by the way, too, I'm still um, kind of waiting on the um, the kernel report. So that there was also an attribution issue on the 2020 kernel report, um, and that hasn't gone through yet. So. But it should. So more to come on that. All right. Uh, community handbook. I'm guessing somebody added that. Probably Georg. Georg. Just uh, guessing. Sure. Hi. So I uh, invited just Grut here. Go ahead, just Grut. Yeah. So uh, as I was working on the community handbook as a part of Google Season Fox program, so. I'm just uh, prior to my ending, uh, like, like I would be completing, like I've already completed the community handbook, which can be checked over here. And we also have a GitHub repo for this. So uh, like all the basic pages have been implemented over here. And my next step would be to improve it in a better sense. And uh, I usually invite uh, improvements and suggestions which you can put up. So if you are, if you can help me since it's the community oriented uh, book. So I think like it would really be creative uh, as a part of community. We all can get engaged into it and provide a better feedback so that we have a better outcome uh, representation of the community, chaos community wide handbook. So, yeah. I'm very excited about this handbook. This is something we've talked about for the last two years and I'm super happy that through Google Season of Docs, we were able to work with Jess Garrett, who has put a lot of work into putting together this handbook, describing how we as a community function and work. And so I invite you all to please give it a read and give feedback. Yeah, I'm, I think it turned out really great too. Thanks for everybody that helped with Josh Karat too. I think there, Josh Karat, you had a lot of great questions for people to when you were constructing the handbook. So thanks for everybody for helping out in that as well. Um, but I think it really looks great. Sure, thanks. And uh, the most interesting part for me and exciting part for me was to know the chaos history where I collaborated with uh, various people, interviewing them, knowing about chaos history in every possible sense, like how it evaluated with Linux Foundation, Bitergia, and the other 
community so it was really fun knowing all those facts and i have uh, drafted all these things into the community handbook so i'm sure like you're going to have uh, pleasure reading this handbook and yes i'm open to any suggestions and improvements so you can just let me know either on the uh, mailing list or just opening up an issue of the repository which i just forwarded over to you well, thanks and again we we also had a second Google Season of Docs project by Shoya. She's also completing her work and it's in the same repository. It's in the same handbook uh, subsection there. Did you share that, Georg? Like put the link in just to highlight Shoya's work. I'm trying to find it. Okay. It's the badging, right? Yeah, that can be found uh, below the DNI badging group within the same handbook menu. Uh, yeah, so here we can. Got it. Matt Snell beat me to it. Thanks, Matt. Matt G beat me to that one. He's quicker to the draw. That's right. <laughs> Excellent. So is, is, is season of DAX over? The 30th, I think. Just two weeks left. Two weeks, okay. Gotcha. Right on. Um, let's see. We are working our way through. Um, there are a couple things with respect to meetings. So I had a few. So Thanksgiving, somebody put this one in. I'm getting thumbs downs from Georg and Ray. So yeah, I think, uh, next next not. third next week is Thanksgiving week <laughs> in, in the U.S. Right. So, what are people's thoughts on chaos meetings in general for the week? Um, you can just put your emoji in there if you want. I think they'll be lightly attended if we hold them. Um, yeah, I'm not in the U.S. and I'm still taking the whole week off because the rest so. of my students do, and I felt jealous. So I'm I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think, uh, I mean, Tuesday in the US is often the day that people travel. So I might suggest that we just not have meetings next week. It's easier if we just don't have them as opposed yeah. to like light, lightly attended kind of things. Cause when I it's a so couple too. people, I never, if I'm on it with just one other person or something like that, it doesn't make a lot of sense to do. Yes, it's not really a meeting. It's more of a hangout. Yeah, which you're all great to see. But <laughs> um, all right. We could have cocktails so, in the afternoon on, on Monday. <laughs> it's eleven thirty here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's Thanksgiving week, man. That's true. It's a good You're point. from Wisconsin. What are you talking about? Why are you? Yeah, it's also also true. <laughs> uh, all right. So how about the answer? Seems to be no. no. <laughs> so all right, we'll cancel meetings and then. Um, is that, that actually, all, all of the working group meetings or just this this meeting? I think all. I think all, yeah. We'll send out a note to the list and wish everybody a nice week off. Enjoy a little bit of time. So, all right. Cool. Look at that, everybody. It's 11.35. Five U.S. Central, thirty-five past the hour. How about that? Yeah, I think that's what they used to say on when you called time. Isn't there one time zone that's like a half hour off? I'm yeah, sorry. it's in India. Hey, right? I just added like one item. I don't know if you people are seeing that on Google Doc. Like, um, yep. has there have we talked about ChaosCon in the first half of next year? I. No, it's it's got to be virtual. Like it's not going to happen in person. So I mean, we don't have to decide now. We can we can talk about this after Thanksgiving. But uh, like as Don far as said, I know, we haven't. Okay, like Don said, I mean, FOSM is already you know virtual, and I assume most conferences will be virtual in the first half of next year. But uh, I know we skipped it in August. But uh, yeah, we can revisit this in 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 a few weeks, but just wanted to tee that up, I guess. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I personally, I, I would like to talk about it in a few weeks, 
I would like to do something. I don't know what that thing is at this moment in time. There's also been a request on the Asia Pacific call. They would like to do something in a more Asian friendly time zone with some presentations, kind of like mm -hmm. a chaos con Asia of some sort. Yeah, so we I should, think that we should talk about that. I'm, I'm cool. If, I'm cool with um, tabling the discussion, to be honest, probably until after Christmas, I think would be good, but. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I like the idea of doing something for the APAC folks. Uh, it, this being virtual, that obviously makes it a lot easier. Uh, I mean, we might have to get up in the middle of the night, but that's fine for, for a day. Yeah. Is, is there an Asia Pacific call tomorrow? I don't uh, see it on the calendar. Uh, it must have been for some last reason. week then, or it it's just, off. It's on my is calendar. It, it's on yours? Okay, yeah. just check. I think I saw it on mine as well. All right, may it just but I, off my it, calendar. It's somehow. not. It's not on the chaos calendar, however. Okay. Well, to Don's so, point, I can bring this up tomorrow, Don. Just to there's, you know, we can wait for a larger discussion, like maybe structure things. But if if there is an interest, that would be cool. Yeah, we talked about it quite a bit in was it the last meeting? I think it was the one that you missed. Okay. Um, and, and what I recommended was actually that we bring it as an agenda item into this meeting so that everybody could talk about it as a group. But I feel like we, there are enough of us in, um, you know, in Europe that we could cover like, you know, part of the part of the day before, before it makes sense for people in the US to participate. Mm -hmm. We might be able to pull something together for them. Yeah, I, I like that idea. Actually, yeah. that's a nice, cause we had, um, if it has come up in the Asia Pacific call and there's an interest, mm -hmm. it seems like a very great yeah. way to bring it, bring these together. They would actually love to do an in-person um, next I year, would. but I kind of told them, I was like, none of us are traveling to Asia right now, I don't think. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, I don't know what countries would have us at this moment in time. <laughs> well, frankly, like I can't, I can't justify flying all the way to Asia for a chaos yeah. On, unless I was there already for something, which I don't have any plans to be. Yeah, okay. you need, I think, the LF to re reignite its adjacent conferences, and I don't yeah. see that being likely in 2021. But I think if they wanted to gather in some, you know, in somebody's office or someplace, they could, they could do that. And I know yeah. it's under better control in lots of countries um, <laughs> than it is. In the U.S. Yeah, so. Frankly, the UK is not great right now either. We're yeah. locked down again. Yeah. All right. Well, this seems but good. Anyway, um, we said we're going to table it, and then we talked about it for ten minutes. So that's okay. Whatever. Thanks for thanks for bringing it up, Ray, and thanks for the comments, everybody. Okay. No worries. All right. Um, cool. Anything else on people's mind? Good. All right, everybody. Um, until the next time. Thanks, everyone. Until Thanksgiving. See you in a couple weeks, everybody. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.